Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. I am here with Nareg Capri Elliot. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I look forward to it. Awesome. So you have built an incredible mortgage business. Uh, I believe you're ranked 129 on the Scotsman's Guide of Loan Officers in the United States, which is an incredible accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to the conversation. So starting off, um, where do you see a lot of the opportunity in the mortgage business right now? I know that loan products are a big thing that people need to be aware of and what's out there right now. So what do you see in that aspect? So the opportunities are, I would say, depending on where you're buying and what you're buying, it differs, right? We, we're seeing a lot of end user product that's renovated, rehabilitated, definitely flying at high clips on price. So basically there's still multiple offers. The price is getting driven up impervious to the, where the rates are at right now. We had a bit of a lull on that, I'd say between October to January, middle of January, but it's picked right back up. The end user consumer seems as though largely does not want to uh, renovate their home. They don't deal with contractors. They'd rather just finance uh, from the bank, get something done, change the locks and move them. So we're seeing that product move. Um, and uh, we're seeing the price per square foot retaining in that product class, depending on area. Uh, condos are definitely moving still. Um, shared space like condos isn't as desirable post-COVID, but it's still moving. We're not seeing condos depress as quickly as we did during the Great Recession. Uh, we're seeing all the HOAs kind of being cleaned up with the right paperwork and the right budget, so it's easy to finance them. The opportunities are probably coming in the way of apartment units and <laughs> likely above four units um, locally in Los Angeles because of a lot of the rules and regulations tied to managing uh, properties. Landlords are having a difficult time navigating tenants these days. And that asset class we're seeing is probably going to have the most opportunity. Wow. And so when, when you look at that, do you look at that from an investor's perspective or do you look at that where you're educating home buyers, you're educating consumers to say, hey, look, you could buy a fourplex, live in one unit, rent the other three out? Yes. So it goes, it goes twofold. A lot of our consumers who have, do really well on like a single family investment property, that is probably still going to sell well, uh, but they feel as though their equity is kind of stagnant there and they don't want to pull out money on it because it's maybe too expensive to. So we're trying to encourage them like, hey, this is there. You can sell it, do a tax deferred 1031 exchange and buy this here, which is a really nice three or four or five to seven unit on a really good street that needs a little bit of elbow grease. This product is discounted about maybe let's just say three to 400,000 from when the rates were at 3%. Now they're double or three, not almost three times that, but the entry is lower. So we're trying to encourage them to like scale up, build the wealth up, you know? So that's what we're seeing. That's really interesting. I don't see many people in the mortgage industry that involved in the home buyer consultation. It's like, here's your pre-approval, go work with, with your realtor and good luck. So do you take that kind of consultative approach with all of your clients and really step in and help with that aspect of the transaction? It depends. You know, you have some consumers that really want a different level of consulting, a higher level of consulting, a more thorough level. You have some consumers that have been there already a million times and they just want the deal done. They want their terms uh, clarified early on and they just want to make sure the deposit's safe. And there's, con there's consumers I've done loans for where I talk to once during an escrow, twice. There's consumers I talk to daily. Everybody is kind of different. People, some people don't have time to talk. Some people are extremely nervous and need to be tended to every day to address their questions. So it all depends which hat I have to wear that day. We like to consider ourselves, you know, in, on top of being loan officers, loan originators, MLOs, we like to consider ourselves as debt managers. Hmm. Interesting. So when you're doing that consultative approach with your clients, do you 
do you position it as though, hey, come work with us because we're going to help you with your financial planning? We're going to help you with those long-term goals? Or is it more focused just on the mortgage transaction? Um, you know what? We like to take a we want to be in your shoes kind of approach. We like to uh, you know, always put ourselves in our borrower's consumer shoes so that they know what they're in for in this process. Everything from as you know, simple as the online login for the secure portal all the way to like, how am I going to manage this rental property after we close? What am I in for? I know the bank said I need X amount of reserves, but Nari, how much should I really keep in my account, assuming I need to make repairs? We also talk to consumers about, you know, if they're going to be um, uh, scaling up, like you have a family of uh, four, husband, wife, two kids, and, you know, basically they need a house now and they're in a small condo. At that point, you know, you're talking about, do they want to be a landlord, rent the property out and buy something? Do they want to sell to buy? So we kind of look at everybody's different appetites for this stuff. That's amazing. And you said something incredibly powerful there of putting yourself in your client's shoes. Every mm -hmm. time, every time. That's amazing. Now, do you have a, a process that you work through on that? Or is it very much like almost an artistic process where you just sit down, get to know their needs and then see what it is that they particularly need? Combination of uh, talking to the business partner or referral partner that referred them to us um, and kind of getting a take of where that consumer is, borrower is based on their relationship. Because uh, if it's a purchase transaction, chances are the realtor referred them to us to do the home loan. The realtor is with them in the car, around them on Saturdays and Sundays, and has a better temperature on this consumer. So we can tend to kind of get an idea of how to approach them or what to kind of navigate. If we don't have that, then you know you have to be kind of uh, adaptive on the phone, get a read on things. If they make some comments about certain topics, or um, you know they forward you an article or a listing, or what do you think about it? You get an idea of how to approach them, do your research and be able to address them. Got it. That's and so powerful for, I mean, again, in the mortgage business, so many people just give the pre-approval and it's like, hey, call me when you found the right house. And I think that knowing the consumer and actively reaching out and having those deeper conversations with them, you close more deals and it's more valuable for the customer. Yeah, and then I was going to say, you know, when you have a consumer that's pre-approved, and they're making an offer on the property, you're basically also being an advocate for them. So what we like to do is get an idea who the listing agent is. Has it been somebody I've worked with in the past? Reach out. Has it been somebody that I have not worked with in the past that would honor a call before they review offers with the seller and say, hey, listen, I'm the loan officer on the file. If you want to vet the file right now, I know everything about it. If you want to call me on speaker with your seller and quiz me, you can do that too. These buyers want this house. We're ready to rock and roll. That is amazing and phenomenal service. Now, I'm interested because it sounds like a lot of your business comes through referrals. That process, when you get a realtor on the other side of the transaction and they get that phone call and they haven't done business with you previous, how many of those realtors do you think come back to you and end up having a business relationship with you and your company as a result of that outbound? You know what? I'll be honest with you. A lot less now than before. The reason being is this. Um, I was uh, keen on harboring relationships with the listing agent, making sure that I am their advocate just as much as uh, the buyer's advocate because I'm responsible for the listing agent. They got to uh, communicate proper data, proper timelines to their seller. I'm responsible to my buyer because I need to let them know what is going on on the loan process. So I am everybody's advocate because if, if I am, a peaceful escrow transaction is happening. And a peaceful escrow transaction means um, we all, uh, the, the consumer gets their property, all the people who are working on a deal get paid sooner. And then a good experience means more business because we gave these people a good experience for everybody. So that's a good thing. With that said, the reason why it's less now than before is because when rates were so low, we were basically triaging some days and making sure we get all the files done and make sure everybody has the ability to refinance and is quoted out. And we didn't have the time to basically do that at that point. 
over time, that transition to us starting our, our own company, Long Titan, or that's us. Uh -huh. And um, a lot of it's now setting up the company in addition to servicing our buyers and their agents, our referral partners, our direct consumer sources. Now that you said that, it's in my head. I'm going to call every listing agent I have a deal with today and just update them. You got me motivated. So, yeah, I'm going to do more of it. <laughs> that is amazing. That's awesome. Now, obviously, you've got lots of tricks up your sleeve for generating referral partner relationships. And that is top of mind for everybody in the mortgage industry right now. How do we generate more referral relationships? So do you have just a couple of tips of what you've learned over the years on how to reach out to realtors, financial planners, investment advisors, insurance people? Yeah, it's uh, you got to be honest. Number one, it's like not how you do it, but what you do. It's like you got to be honest. Um, you have to know product. You have to know what you're talking about. You can't be a snake oil salesman. And number three, you got to be come from a good referral source and come from a good place. You don't want, you don't, when you're going to go get business, you shouldn't have loan apps on your mind. You should have the, on your mind, what it takes to harbor a relationship with this person. Because there's no good business relationship without somewhat of a friend, friendship relationship, you know, so. That's what I do recommend all our guys to do. That's what I've been doing. So I like doing it. I don't, I don't want to work with people that don't like me. I don't want to work with people that I don't get along with. So, you know. Makes sense. Now, you mentioned product there. And I think as the market evolves, private money is going to become more, I guess, important to have in your back pocket. So are you seeing more need for private loans? And, and what does that look like in your business? Mm -hmm. So uh, just to uh, kind of explain on a baseline, the FHFA has basically laid the hammer down and said, we no longer want to be the only show in town guaranteeing mortgages nationwide. So they made it um, more, not as equitable for higher down and higher FICO owners to get loans. And guaranteed by the FHFA agencies, Fannie and Freddie, but they're also um, lowering the cost on lower down and uh, lower FICO consumers. So giving opportunity to those people that aren't in as good of a position. So that's, a, that's FHFA saying to uh, 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 Wall Street, you guys have to hold the bag and you guys got to be responsible because we've been through this about 13, 14 years now. Pretty sure everybody got gets it now, right? Okay, so you guys got to be the one running the loans. Now, it's the non-QM market, which is non-qualified mortgage. That's investment funds, <laughs> fund, a retirement funds, uh, any uh, uh, you know depository institutions, credit unions. They want these entities to shoulder the origination process for the country's uh, real estate market. Okay, so they're, they, uh, that's what the FHFA is kind of moving towards. Now, now we're seeing a 12-month bank statement income loan. So this is somebody who's got the perfect profile, let's say, minus a tax return. It's being priced just as well as a conventional loan with an income tax return. It's, 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 it's a different thing right now. We're seeing investment property loans with non-QM lenders priced significantly better than with Fannie and Freddie. Wow. That's incredible. And so I forget what the specific deadline is, but once that comes into place, it'll be the, the lower down payment you put on a home, the less the fees are. And the more down payment you put down, the higher the fees are. Is that right? It's, it's not higher for them. It, it's higher than it was before and lower than it was before for lower uh, down and lower FICO people. It was more expensive before compared to then. It's like, like, it's significantly less expensive. I think the date was about seven or eight days ago. I forget the exact date. That's when all of our lenders sent us emails saying, if you have lots, you got to close the loans by X date, Y date. But all the new pricing is accounted for. The debt to income hits now. Oh, another thing. All consumers now are hit with an uh, LLPA. That's a price add-on for DTIs above 40. That's them saying, if your debt to income is tight, you got to pay a premium to do the loan because it's just a risk here. Yep. That makes total sense, man. That is very, very valuable stuff. Now, if we could switch gears just a little bit and talk sure. about 
how you've grown your business. And again, being thank, thank you for being so generous with your time. But what do you think is the number one thing that you've done over the years that's really put you in the position that you're in right now? Like, what would you tell a new loan officer that's coming into the business, the number one thing that they need to be focused on in their business? Discipline. Oh, I like that. You got to be, you got to discipline yourself. You have to be convicted in your ways. Uh, you can't want to do something. You can't tell people who give you advice. I know, I know I got to do this. You have to do it. You have to, you know, commit to it. You got to write your goals down. You got to write your processes down. You have to be a creature of habit. And that is for loan officers, successful loan officers, successful loan originators. You have to be, you have to have a system set up because when the volume comes in, when you have a consumer who's not happy with how things are going, when you have that one deal in your pipeline that is taking up 90% of your time, you need to stay cool. You got to make sure everything's in process in your personal life and your work life so that it clears out and flushes out and you're able, you're clear headed enough to think of solutions for the consumer and uh, you know, the, the, the file that you have going. So on top of it, when you are inundated at 10 loans and in two months or five months, 10 loans is easier for you, you got to be disciplined and, and regimented because you want to maybe scale up to 15 to 20 loans at a time. So that takes discipline. That is amazing. That is a wonderful answer. And Nurek, thank you again for being so generous with your time. Can you tell us a little bit about your new company? Where do people go to find out about that? And how do people contact you? Uh, our new company is called Loan Titan. It's www.ltitan.com. We're based out of Pasadena, California. If you go to ltitan.com, all our information is there. You can contact us. We have every loan product under the sun. And we can quote out any type of scenario. We'll let you know if we can do a loan. We do have private money loans if you need to get funded very quickly against the property. If you have any questions, you know where to reach us. And thank you for your time, sir. That's amazing. Thank you for being on the show.